Hello everyone, my name is Nathan P. Butler. This is my Star Wars vlog, The Voice of Reason, or Lack Thereof. This is episode number two of the vlog, all recorded on the same day as uh, one and zero and the upcoming number three, hence the Vader shirt and whatnot here. Uh, the topic I want to cover this time is one that I feel is dividing people because we have this tendency not to want to even try to see the other person's point of view. And that is this whole issue of perspective on the Star Wars trilogies. You hear a lot these days, especially in late December going into January here in 2015-2016, of people going and seeing The Force Awakens, which hits home video here in less than a month, and basically saying, it's the first real Star Wars film since 1983, or Star Wars is finally back, and things like that. And, unsurprisingly, there are some Star Wars fans who take great offense to that, because, from a factual standpoint, it's not really true, right? Of course there have been Star Wars films since 1983. You get the special editions, for one thing, but of course we had The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith in 99, 2002, and 2005, respectively. Technically, we also, in theaters, had the Clone Wars film back in 2008. So, no, it's not the first Star Wars film since 1983. And, of course, on top of that, Star Wars itself has not really gone away. Despite the fact that we talk about this dark time back between Return of the Jedi in theaters and the beginning of the Expanded Universe in 1991, or Return of the Jedi in theaters and the special editions, perhaps, there really wasn't much of a dark time. Marvel continued producing comics for quite a while after Return of the Jedi had been in theaters, all the way up to eventually ending their regular series and then wrapping up their Ewoks and Droids series. Then Blackthorn Publishing had their little 3D Star Wars series very briefly with three issues, and heading right after that, then you get the launch of the West End Games RPG. There really isn't much of a dark time in there. It's just that Star Wars scaled back to a large degree. Since 1991... It's been going gangbusters in books and comics and video games and such, and then back in again the late 90s, early 2000s, the prequel trilogy, and then eventually Clone Wars on television, and now with the sequel trilogy and all these new films that are going to be coming from Disney. Star Wars never went anywhere, so Star Wars is back is not entirely accurate either. But it's less about fact than it is about perception, than it is about attitude, and it's drawing yet another wedge between original trilogy and prequel trilogy lovers and causing them to butt heads and get offended by each other. Now that's nothing new. Since The Phantom Menace arrived, there have been people decrying the prequels, and people who love the prequels get kind of a bad rap. They get crapped on all the time because of their love for the prequels, because the prequels were different than the original trilogy. And that, I think, is where we need to go with this. This question of Star Wars is back, and the perception that it's the first real Star Wars film since 1983 when The Force Awakens arrives. Understand that what we're talking about here is not about fact. It's not about this film exists or not. The Phantom Menace exists or not. No, of course it exists. Even those people who hate The Phantom Menace acknowledge that it exists. Otherwise, what would they have to hate, right? They may not want it to exist, but they acknowledge that it does and they're grumbly about it. Okay. Fine. But understand that Star Wars is a generational thing, not just in its storytelling in the films of prequel, original, sequel, but generational in terms of how people have grown up with it. You have a generation of Star Wars fans who actually grew up with the prequels, or grew up with the Clone Wars, and now are growing up with the sequel trilogy and Rebels from kids who are, you know, kids back in the late 90s onward until now. For someone who grew up with the prequels, that is Star Wars to them, but not necessarily for those who came around before. The original Star Wars generation was the people who saw it in theaters back in the 70s and 80s, who perhaps grew up with that or grew up with the expanded universe before it became the Legends continuity in the early 90s, or grew up with the role-playing game and so forth. To them, Star Wars is something very different. Star Wars is essentially the mood and attitude of the classic trilogy. The key thing here is that as Star Wars evolved as a franchise, there comes a moment where there is a significant change in attitude, a significant change in tone in Star Wars, and it's right around the time that that shift from one trilogy as the focus of marketing to the other 
winds up happening in the late 1990s. For those who are Star Wars fans of the original trilogy era, back in the 70s, 80s, going into the early 90s, Star Wars is essentially a space fantasy. It's a romp. It's space wizards and space magic with this sci-fi backdrop. It's science fiction fantasy, but the leaning is towards that fantasy side and the idea of mythological archetypes. It is a modern myth in American culture in a sci-fi setting, in a sense. That attitude, that whimsy, pervades the original trilogy. It pervades a lot of the early Marvel comics and Del Rey books and so forth, and it certainly sets some of the stage for the way that stories were told in trilogy form, somewhat in Super Weapon of the Week style and so forth, in the early Star Wars Expanding Universe or Legends continuity, in things like the Thrawn trilogy, uh, the Jedi Academy trilogy, uh, the Han Solo trilogy, Tales of the Jedi, and so forth. It's this sense of Star Wars as something that is much more fantasy than sci-fi. It has a certain vibe, a certain feel to it, that really carries on until the mid to late 1990s. For those who grew up in that time, that is Star Wars. We define the things that we love in the context in which we experience them first, when we have that love. The same thing if you've got someone in your life who you love, have a relationship with, maybe it's someone that you've married, maybe it's a best friend, whatever, and 10, 20 years down the road, you're still relating to them the way you used to, even though they may have changed and there's something wrong with that relationship. The perception that you have of them is still based on what you knew of them, not what you now know of them, and a lot of times it causes strain. Star Wars is very much like that because it is something that so many fans love on a deeper level than just a like for many other franchises. Fine, it makes sense. Psychologically, that makes perfect sense. But also, there is a psychological change in tone that needs to be addressed and needs to be recognized. When you get to the late 1990s, things take a turn for the dark and for the science fiction rather than science fantasy when it comes to Star Wars. You get things like the launch of the New Jedi Order, a much more sci-fi version of a Star Wars conflict, this massive publishing line of 19 books and other spin-offs and such that is a departure from the old way of doing things in duologies and trilogies and such into this much larger scale project. And it's dark. Chewbacca is dying. Uh, Anakin Solo is killed off. Uh, you've got all these different things that happen and a lot of people get hurt or killed and Coruscant gets ravaged and so forth. New Jedi Order is dark as hell. And it really stays like that to an extent because then you get Dark Nest, which granted sucks, so we should probably not talk about it, which is dark in and of itself. Legacy of the Force, my favorite actually of the legend stories of that era, uh, which sees the fall of Jason Solo to the dark side and eventually him having to be killed and stopped by his own sister, Jaina. So yet another Solo kid is dead. Uh, and then you get into the sort of dark, weird storytelling, very sci-fi again of Fate of the Jedi and so on, heading off into the era in which we have sort of a, the end caps of the kind of sci-fi, I guess, this is for, for your point of view, the kind of sci-fi-ish Star Wars legacy, my favorite Star Wars comic series of all time. And on the other end cap of that, Crucible, a distinctly sci-fi Star Wars story, uh, albeit with mystical elements tied into it. At the same time that's happening, you've got the prequel trilogy being released. And the prequel trilogy is not about mythological archetypes. The prequel trilogy is a tragedy a la something Shakespearean, Hamlet, Macbeth. It is a man trying to do the right thing, but making the right decisions for the wrong reasons, and the wrong decisions for the right reasons are basically bringing the galaxy into a period of complete and utter darkness and tragedy amongst those that he loves, and himself in becoming more machine than man and so forth. The prequels are a tragedy, which is a distinctly different vibe and different style of storytelling than the original trilogy and the hero's journey and the mythological archetypes. Distinctly different, and a tragedy by its nature is a down ending. It's a, a dark story. There was no way there was going to be a happy ending at the end of episode three. The Jedi have to be pretty much wiped out. The Clone Wars have to be ending. Anakin has to be Vader. Uh, Luke and Leia are now without either parent. Wow! Things suck for them. But we knew that going into it. That's what the prequel trilogy had to be. A tragedy. But you've got that tragedy. You have the sort of war without end concept of constant warfare with nameless soldiers who are essentially interchangeable cannon fodder in the form of the droids and to an extent the clones in the Clone Wars series and all the dark 
questions that raises about just the nature of war itself, while you've also got the New Jedi Order going, all these books and comics and such for the Clone Wars before the cartoon series comes in and smashes the living shit out of it, and you've got stuff like you know, New Jedi Order, Legacy of the Force, and so on. From the span of about late 1990s, about 98, 99, was about the time I was graduating high school for what it's worth. I'm class of 98 for high school. Uh, taking this all the way up really through right around the time the reboot happened, or maybe a little bit before when they were putting out things like Razor's Edge and Honor Among Thieves and Star Wars Volume 2 by Brian Wood with this whole, we're going to make stuff that's just basically fluff that doesn't really connect to anything so that it can be accessible. Uh, but for that entire stretch, Star Wars became very science fiction and very dark. That is a marked difference between mythological, upbeat, uh, hero's journey storytelling that we got prior to that. Uh, Star Wars, you could say, became more adult. It grew up. But maybe we didn't know that loved one first as an adult. Maybe we knew them not as the jaded adult, but as the child with hopes and dreams before they got crushed by reality. That's why you have these two very different groups of fans, or at least part of why. Original trilogy fans who would say, this is the first real Star Wars film since 1983, are saying it because the Force Awakens and really some of the other publications recently, what they're trying to do with like Marvel Star Wars series and Darth Vader and whatnot, they're trying to get back to the spirit of the original trilogy. They're trying to recapture the whimsy, you could say, of Star Wars circa 1980s, early 90s, late 70s. And that's why these fans are like, yes, it's back. I'm psyched. Wonderful. The Star Wars tone that you prefer is back. You might want to say it like that. Not Star Wars is back, but the Star Wars tone I enjoy the most is back. But people don't like to say that. We like to just make generalizations that make it sound like a-holes most of the time to people who disagree with us. That's kind of the way that it works. It's probably the way this blog is working right now. Um, but just have this sense of those fans have the tone of what they think of as Star Wars back again. They're excited about that and more power to them to be excited about that because there was a distinct tonal shift. Maybe they weren't as big of fans of that era in which things became darker, the prequels took center stage, and now, as we're coming out of that and seeing something new, they're happy to see that. Fine. Wonderful. But understand, if you're one of those people saying that, that when you're really hyping that up, at the same time that you're slapping the prequels around, you're basically dismissing the love of Star Wars of an entire generation or so of other Star Wars fans. You're basically saying, this is Star Wars, all that stuff in between wasn't, and anybody who loves that stuff in between, you're delusional, you're not a real Star Wars fan, you're not a true Star Wars fan, screw you, etc., etc. You have to recognize, if you're like me, someone who grew up with the original trilogy and thinks of that as his preferred tone of Star Wars, I like that style, that's why I love The Force Awakens, um, the stuff in between happened. The stuff in between is part of the evolution of Star Wars, and while it may not be your preferred tone, for some people it is, particularly for those people who grew up with it. So dismissing it, belittling it, is belittling other fans, which is not really something that good fans should be doing. If we're going to be true fans of the saga, we need to embrace the messages the saga has, the inclusiveness, uh, the hopefulness, and the idea that Star Wars brings people together of all stripes. Who gives a shit about your gender, your race, your sexual orientation, your national origin, uh, any disabilities? Who cares? You're a Star Wars fan. You are one of us. Come join our reindeer games. Let's all play some Ewok celebration music together. Or maybe have a Gungan in the back going, We are free! Or something. But don't belittle each other. In this case, the belittling tends to be going mostly in the one direction, but there have been times where it was the other way around. Where it was, well, prequels are what's in theaters now, you just gotta deal with it, your kind of Star Wars is old school. Okay. Valid at the time, perhaps. But now we gotta deal with the reality of Star Wars kind of coming back full circle. If you really want to foment good discussion, if you really want to help Star Wars thrive and grow as a franchise and as a fan community, think about the perspectives of others and take them into account before you start mouthing off and saying things that are going to belittle other people. You probably wouldn't walk into a group of mixed races and start throwing around racial epithets. You probably 
wouldn't walk into a room full of people of mixed sexual orientations and start gay bashing. So why would you go into a mixed group of Star Wars fans with your love of one tone of the saga and start bashing the living hell out of another tone of the saga and anyone who enjoys it? They enjoy what they enjoy. You enjoy what you enjoy. It's all one saga. You're all enjoying aspects of it. Get a grip and try very hard, hopefully, next time. If you're one of these people, try to see the other side's point of view before you walk in and start throwing flames around. And look, I know, that's kind of what society has become right now. Divisive. Everybody's sniping it out of side. Everybody balkanized into their own little camps. We're in the middle of a presidential election, and that's the biggest circus I've seen in many, many years. And I've gone to the real circus before. But, hopefully at some point, the country will heal. We will find a way to see other perspectives and find a way to actually work together to, and God, I don't want to say this because of who says it all the time, but to basically make American society great again, to live up to the potential that it has. Um, same thing with Star Wars. The divisiveness at some point needs to end if things are going to move forward in a positive way. So it's time to start bringing fandom together. Who cares if you're a prequel lover, an original trilogy lover, a sequel trilogy lover, you love Disney's new canon, you love the Legends continuity, you love the video games on PlayStation platforms, no, I love them on Xbox, no, I prefer the films on VHS, no, I want them on Betamax, no, how about Blu-ray, you like the Blu-ray cuts? Okay. Who cares where our opinions differ as long as we're being respectful to one another? Remember, opinion is subjective. As long as you're basing your opinion on actual facts and you have a firm foundation of what you're saying, so it is essentially an intellectually honest opinion, an opinion is just your perspective relating to those facts. Someone else will see the same set of facts, the same Star Wars saga, and come out with a completely different perspective on what they like about it, what they find most interesting about it, and their favorite elements of it. And that's fine. The moment you start trying to control what other people think, if they don't think like you, you just become the Empire. Or the Sith. Or an asshole. Let's try as a community to treat each other better. With that, I'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.